I use all the apps. We look at what consumer wants at this point. We like to, to have fun. We like to have fun when we work. We like our consumers to have fun when they when they look at our brand and what they do. How do you still navigate within with competition? We see more demand for things that are shareable because right. people tend to watch games together because it's a fun thing. So so pizza, you never go wrong with a pizza. So heavy bulky stuff. Do you guys do anything around that? We are a logistics company as well. We uh, now work um, with a lot of grocers. These things are never easy. We were expanding uh, into two new markets per week. In my perception, Vault is and has been positioning themselves as something more premium. At the same time, it is the place for everyone. Sounds like you guys are very synced. It's going to be a standard. I think it's it's becoming a standard already. As a, I don't know, high level thing, do you guys already notice, I don't know, the spike of downloads, the spike of orders during the game time? We are very well equipped to, to meet this demand. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's Stefan Soroka back on the Friday Takeaway podcast. And today we have a super exciting guest, Oksana Lukyanenko, the GM of Wall. Germany. Very excited Hello. to have you here. Thank you very much for joining. If you could please share a little bit about yourself. And I'm super excited to start this conversation with you. Thank you for having me. Uh, really, really cool uh, being here. Happy to be here today. Um, I, as you mentioned, I am the GM uh, of uh, Volt uh, in Germany and have been uh, that for over two years now, but the story has started a little bit differently as I joined DoorDash before, right? So I took over a challenge of uh, launching DoorDash in Germany, and then um, a great thing happened, which is DoorDash and Volt joining forces. Um, I think that that was one of the most exciting things, taking over also Volt business and, and building this uh, together with a great team. So that has been already now for over two and a half years. And well, I have been in this business for a while. I worked before uh, um, in Delivery Hero. And then before that in Turkish business, that's one of the oldest food delivery businesses, I think, in this whole world, like probably. Wow. Uh, um, I wouldn't be 100% sure of that. So don't quote me, but that's pretty, pretty old. So uh, but that's where my journey started, I think, over 12 years ago now. So I've been, the business has been, and the industry has been evolving, and it's been really exciting to see how it's going and where it's going. Well, I'm really happy to be here today to be discussing that with you. Super excited. Thank you very much. And it's very, it would be very interesting to speak about different perspectives of food delivery because a lot of things changed throughout the 12 years. Yes, everything absolutely. changed. <laughs> but even in the past couple of years, a lot changed. And uh, right. it would be interesting to discuss the your journey, the journey of Vault, the journey of DoorDash, and uh, where is it going, as well as potentially dive into some specifics. I'm sure it's going to be very interesting for everyone who is listening. Uh, so. Let's start... Let's start with where you started. Like uh, you launched DoorDash Germany and then there was a merger and uh, there are a lot of things happening right now, but a lot of things happened before with food delivery market, with grocery delivery market. There is a lot of context to it. Like Lifrando was the only player for a very long time. And then DoorDash, Vol, Uber Eats going in the country and start uh, the invasion uh, in a good way. And uh, now uh, three players are in the market and DoorDash is now with the merger with, with Vault and uh, many people, many companies quit from the quick commerce perspective and uh, Food Panda came on the market and then left and a lot of things happened. Could you please describe the situation right now and maybe share some storyline how did it develop and where do you see is it going this is a really cool question and really th interesting thing to discuss because i think this business has always been very dynamic and the industry has always been very dynamic and started to be even more dynamic 
um, when the pandemic uh, started and a lot of different types of players emerged and they come come in, they then leave, uh, they change the markets where they operate and whatnot. So it's very, very dynamic. And it's I think it's very even hard to make a snapshot and say, hey, this is this amount of players right now. That's not that wouldn't be true because every day we see some different types of players emerging and um, and trying to tap on this fantastic opportunity here in Germany. And I think what is really cool is um, we kind of self-mockingly talk about ourselves uh, at Vault as a sixth mover advantage. We kind of, uh, we launch sometimes not the, as a first one, a lot of times, uh, not as the first time in the market, but coming from Finland, this brand and had to be so different so if you're in finland it's really super cold right it's you have to operate with things that that have to be very efficient that have to be built for different scale and for scaling not just in one country but in many countries and that makes you um work towards efficiency even on long distances even on 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 very different usually components that are considered in this business to be kind of a no-go so i think when you feel when you when you think about that like a vault has this uh this amazing technology that we're running with and that's why it's less about who else is in the market like who else and how these people are playing what is their game plan it's what about our game plan right and how we are doing that and i, I realize that germany is a particularly challenging market from all types of sides but i think if anyone, Vault is uniquely positioned exactly because of that, because of this kind of place where where it's coming from and the technology that is behind that. And that is making me, that that makes me quite confident and happy that uh, that it's me who has this uh, 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 at my disposal to kind of to work with that. Going back to the market, I think what I truly like about the market is that it has huge potential. Right. There's a lot of, I think, grocery, online grocery business uh, is generally has been one of the fastest growing online segments in Germany between 2020 and 2023, based on official statistics, like growing something like 16%. Wow. But, but I don't quote me on that, but their, their reality is that the potential is huge, right? They And it's very normal that a lot of different players would try to tap on that potential. Right. And and it everyone will discover something new, a new angle, a new way of thinking about that. And uh we need to learn all together through going through that. And I think that's where we we currently are, right? A lot of different things are happening, exits, entries. And as someone exits, someone uh, someone entries also the market. And that's what what I find most exciting, right? The learning from that and what didn't work, what worked. And what we can do better than we were doing better uh, than uh, yesterday, for example. So that's kind of my view of, uh, on that. Super interesting. And I really like the thought that you mentioned that Walt is basically not thinking as much about the competition, but rather thinks about evolving and being better than what was yesterday, kind of, yes. if I heard you right. And yes, I think, absolutely true. I think it's very visible uh, to be honest, as a user, I really enjoy using Vault. I use all the apps, obviously, but I really enjoy using Vault because it's visible that you guys have like some some special touch to the product itself. And uh, the, the whole story, how Vault was developing, it was never the first, as you mentioned. It was never the guy with the biggest amount of money. It was never the quickest, but it was always about the product, about the quality, about the writers, about the experience. And it always had this special touch when it went on many markets, when it was like developing very fast. And uh, it's very interesting that you keep this uh, in your DNA even now. That's truly so. I think, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's work, right? You have to make sure that every new person who joins now, we're now around thousand people in Germany, right? Uh, it's not just only Germany. Germany. No, we're not. This is like, I think like around 400 of those are engineers and product people. Right. For us, it's also extremely important that our team that develops the product actually 
tries it, right? And works with it. And you kind of, the, you, you develop something, then you order groceries and then you see that that's, well, that might not be working really well. So they kind of fix this as they go. So I think those type of things, like trying using your product, consuming your product and being a customer, being uh, going, being able to visit the merchant and all of those things are critical for us. We try to stay as close to our customers, be it merchant, be it um, be it a consumer as possible. And that's why we also have this tech hub here in, in Germany mm. that is um, that is very, very important for us. And as you say, we try to compete with ourselves, try to do things better than we were doing yesterday. If it, it feels from your side that it's working, then uh, that's the best uh, testimonial. Very interesting. But at the same time, competition plays a very big role, right? Uh, there are still the... On one hand, the advantage of the first mover. On the other hand, as you mentioned, you're like a six mover. There were so many players already. Delivery came, left, and then uh, again, Food Panda. Now it's uh, you guys and Uber and uh, Leaf Rando. And Leaf Rando is a very strong, stable player in the market with a lot of history, uh, with a, probably one of the biggest aggregators uh, itself in the world for food delivery. The market itself is not very much taught. Uh, into the, in the direction of the direct courier delivery, right? Restaurants are taught to deliver food themselves or uh, the pickup at the restaurant. So I would say that this is in many ways, relatively a new thing that you guys are bringing in the market and that Uber is bringing in the market and that actually Leafrando is building themselves as well. Did you see any benefits, challenges, or uh did you define like differently your audience specifically? Maybe you can share some, I don't know, insights. What was your strategy? What is your take uh, on it in terms of how do you still navigate within with competition, even though you're still uh, trying to be better than yourself yesterday? I think that's a really great question. And so there's so many components to it, right? So thinking about what, what, what is it that we do differently or what is it that we do, right? We mm -hmm. believe that um, we kind of, we believe in the next generation of e-commerce uh, will be next wave, let's say, will be something that would evolve around 30 to maybe 40 minutes delivery. On demand. On demand. And that's uh, the, the way of our thinking about that, that it's going to be a standard. I think it's it's becoming a standard already. And, and in I'm many talking, ways. Yeah, in, in many ways, of course, there's different things, but that we're moving into that direction. And I would have to say that it's it's just a journey, right? And that's where we can, the consumer wants to see speed, um, maybe not the, the extra speed that's like talks about four, three, four minutes. That's not what we are. We're, we're not in that game. We're absolutely in the game of this, you leave your work, you know where you're going, you know if you're going to go for dinner with your friends or if you're going to, you're tired, you want to have a burger or you're going to cook something and you order that as you're leaving. By the time you arrive home, you already have that. So that's the game we're, uh, we're in and we want to ensure that we provide um, retailers or restaurants or whoever it is in the market, that opportunity to plug in into that marketplace and talk to that to the consumer actually wants that. Mm -hmm. And we do know that the consumer wants that, right? We, we, we do see that there's, there's been demand on even hyper-fast delivery had its own demand, but we, we believe that that's, that's the right thing, right? 30 to 40 minutes is where, where, where the next thing is going on. And that's our kind of logic behind this. And mm -hmm. It's also important what you were mentioning that we are um, we are a logistics company as well, right? We are a marketplace, but we're a logistics company as well that develops the best technology that allows you to utilize that service. And we can serve uh, our customers like on the merchant side um, as, a, as their provider. If they have their own online platform that they need logistics provider in, and that's what, what Drive is for, is that that's where you plug your platform into this logistics capability, and we provide you that. 
right? So you, it's, it's, it's about connecting those dots and making sure that the future is around those 30 to 40 minutes and where we believe that we have a strong technology to, to offer. So that's how I would kind of think about that and about our fifth, sixth, whatever mover advantage that we want to be in every selected market. And that's where we will focus on. And of course, that said, when I said talk about those things, it it never goes without 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 consumer experience. Mm-hmm. Right? Wall takes it really seriously. Like we, be it in Germany or elsewhere, you can reach our customer care under the 60 seconds most of the time. That's where we give the consumer the chance to say, hey, anything that happens, it's it's also our problem. We're there for you. We are to support, we're to kind of, to, to be on the journey when you're hungry and you really need that food to come and it's just two minutes late. So so that's how we think about Vault. Very interesting. You speak a lot about technology, right? And I understand that it's a very important backbone of Vault. Absolutely. At the same time, there was a merger, right? Between DoorDash and Vault. And these things are never easy. Uh, and uh, a lot of things change. New technologies come, companies different have different processes, different teams, a lot of stuff, right? Different cultures, uh, in many ways, different strategies. Uh, maybe the same vision, maybe the same goals, but still a lot of things to match together. Can you please share, you were right on the edge of this marriage, right? Of this yeah. uh, merger. Can yes. you please share your experience? How was it? Uh, where did it turn out? Where is it going? Where is it leading? Super interesting to hear some context, some thoughts, experiences, everything you can. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, uh, I joined DoorDash, as you mentioned. And when you, as a, as a leader, you kind of also choose the company which you join, right? You try to align on values. You try to ensure that what you feel is right in life is mm-hmm. also true for the company. And DoorDash was this great place and it's one of the most successful companies in, in our industry. And it felt really it felt really great because of the values that the, they live by. And when the the when when this merger happened, it was, I think it was the base for the whole thing. And like when Tony and Mickey came together, that was the main thing that was talked about all the time. And first it felt like, "Mm, really, is it all about? But actually, when you start kind of integrating two companies, then you feel that that's the main thing. And I have been through a lot of M&As in in my career. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's probably one of the most successful ones that I've seen ever. And it, the reason for that is exactly that alignment of values of people thinking of what's important uh, and when they think about the same thing. And, and of course, there's a lot of details to that. There's a lot of like things that you need to go through, as you say, align the processes with which you work. But if you truly fundamentally believe that um, what's white is white, what's yellow is yellow together, you see it from the same, then then it's, it's really cool. And I think what was also and continues to be very exciting is this cross-pollination, right? DoorDash is, is a fantastic business, but Walt is also very, is a great business. There's a Super lot diverse. of ideas that are already kind of being implemented on both sides. Something is taken from DoorDash, implemented at Walt within the technology and some pieces of Walt technology and ways of working and integrated in DoorDash. And that is the piece where kind of, there's a very low ego, which is one of the key components, I think, where people are like so hungry to learn. And that's one of Volt's values, like will to teach and will to learn. Mm-hmm. And that's where you kind of, when you have that and there's no ego, then you kind of get this fantastic cocktail of, of best things that are, uh, that are coming in. So, so yes, it's not, merger is never easy. It's never easy, but at the same time, there's, if you see that this happening and now we're kind of, uh, it's been two years. Uh, and I think I can confidently say that that's really uh, working truly well. And a lot of cool things are coming uh, from our colleagues in, in DoorDash 
and also Walt is um, is obviously developing further and further on on top of the things that uh, that they learn. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. And I really like that um, you talk a lot about the uh, personal things like yes, ego, yeah. like the connection and uh, the values. And those are the base, I think, of building a company, building a business. And if you don't have the right base, no matter how hard you try, what process you have to build something big and sustainable, it's super difficult. But sounds like you guys are very synced uh, on this topic. And that's very exciting to hear because these synergies, let's see where, where it take the market, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. obviously have a lot of big expansion plans and I have separate question about that. But yeah. to stick to the topic of the Germany, yes. right now we are in the middle of uh, Euro 2024 and yeah. uh, it is a big event and yes. uh, it is held in Germany. Now, can you please share, does it have like any effect on the business? How do you guys prepare? Uh, what do you do? How do you make best of it? Uh, just generally the experience of holding this type of big event uh, and how does it affect the food delivery business in general? I would say that if you go now to anyone in the market who operates within a food delivery realm or a grocery even uh, delivery realm, they would tell you the same thing that of course it's a, it's a great opportunity and looking at our like specific cuisines, let's say you can never go mm -hmm. wrong about burgers and pizzas because these are the things that people share. Sushi also is, is a kind of quite a, um, a, quite a popular thing that's happening I, I, when we were thinking about this um, event happening in Germany, we were pretty excited, but we also didn't want to go in a classic way. We wanted to to give it like vault style, I would say, like right, because we are we really like our tone. We like to to have fun. Mm. We like to have fun when we work. We like our consumers to have fun when they when they look at our brand and what they do. And I think the cool part that is now kind of started to kind of really spread over half of Europe, which is pretty cool, is our uh, food bowl is coming home. And it's a food bowl, right? Based on this, it's not to this, uh, and I'm not big uh, on on uh, on football, but even I know that, that, you know, 1996 um, um, European Championship, that is a famous song about football coming home. So kind of play with that a little right. bit. I actually... Funny enough, I have this thing here and I will show you. So I have this uh, because I love it and I want this poster on my wall. Now I need to change this. <laughs> um, but uh, what we did, we uh, not we, but the team, I would say, I wouldn't take credit for that. Um, the team also played with thinking, okay, how do we, where do we place that? Where do mm -hmm. we make sure that we don't go crazy with spending money, right? Left, right, and center. And that's also the vault uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. We want, we are very capital efficiency focused. And we actually did our media, build our media strategy around, around high traffic places, which are train stations and the similar with a lot of people coming in and playing. And that's where I think it was the right choice. The team mm -hmm. did, did, did a great move there. And uh, in the end, it now started to go really, I wouldn't, I don't know what the definition of viral is, but in our context, it is quite viral. Like it's really, really uh, big and it's also spreading across Europe, not just right. in Germany. And obviously uh, the love that we kind of put into the creating this campaign is coming back from our consumers. And we have, uh, we have really, um, really a lot of demand that we're working on, on, on meeting every now and then it's also raining here not unlike uh, on your side of the of the screen uh so we kind of there's a lot of things happening with the football and we're uh it's still a couple of weeks now to go i think right. so I, I i'm i think we'll still see a lot of interesting consumption patterns uh, and analyze them back and i can uh, share them with you later as we go through them super interesting but as a I don't know, high level thing. Do you guys already notice, I don't know, the spike of downloads, the spike of orders during the game time? Because it is 
it is a questionable thing, right? Keep, people are coming to the event and uh, not necessarily people would want to stay out inside, right? And order in. At the same time, there is a huge population inside the country, right? Who is staying in and who is enjoying uh, their favorite sport. Uh, so do you already see some special dynamics on this game days or, uh, I don't know, or some specific cuisines with one country winning or something? I don't know, but maybe you already saw uh, some connections there and some synergies. Yes, of course, we see we see an increase in demand. That's for sure. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, like we see more demand for things that are shareable because right. people tend to watch games together because it's a fun thing. So, so pizza, you never go wrong with a pizza. And we see that already in our data. We also see that uh, grocery and kind of things that come with that, like drink beverages are also right. in demand. So all of those type of things, of course, again, during the game nights, uh, you see higher demand as well, so, which is which is expected. Sometimes it's not as easy, of course, to predict how high the demand will be right because a game night and you if you were watching the germany game um this weekend you would see that it was not just the game it was also like a, a thunderstorm and rain right and it kind of adds up to people staying in so those type of things is something that i feel are super hard to predict but at the same time again going back to technology and vault technology I think we are very well equipped to to meet this demand right now, and yeah, like we'll. I am I'm really excited about like looking even deeper into those trends and seeing seeing uh, new stuff happening over the next weekend and new next weekend. Yeah. Super excited to reconnect after and see how yes, it plays uh, out. Yes, totally. Very, <laughs> very very eager to hear more about that. Yeah. Uh, market changed a lot in the past couple of years, right? And uh, previously it was expansion at all cost, money, no object. Everybody is uh, trying to conquer as many markets and as many customers as possible, try new products. Uh, very recently, a couple of years, uh, market changed a lot. And uh, Vault is one of a few companies that keeps on entering new markets, right? You entered recently Austria, uh, Albania, I think, is on the map that was public. I don't know what else is going on. Maybe you can share what is general strategy for Vault expansion in terms of the countries, in terms of the products, in terms of the customers, any terms. How do you guys see it and uh, where are you guys going? Um, it's good to, you, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Albania. Yes, that's where we are right now. Luxembourg, Austria as well. So um, this this is definitely happening. Vault continues to grow and enter the markets where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, like being representing Germany here, it's uh, we also invest and continue investing in expansion of different different kinds. We're almost I think last week we were almost in sixty cities if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Because why am I why am I choosing words here? Because we were expanding. Uh, into two new markets per week. So that's that's this the velocity we've been busy. Right. And um we're also when we think about expansion, we don't only think about like the geographical expansion. We also think about expanding our portfolio of right. products that we offer to the market and the tools that we offer to our merchants. Um, of thinking of expanding verticals. We uh, now we work um, with a lot of grocers. We do different type of constellations, be it kind of adding them on our marketplace or offering drive. It might be that we offer what we call hybrid delivery, where the, you can do deliveries yourself, but then when you're stuck, you don't have your writers didn't show up. You can actually, with one uh, click of a button, um, switch it to our delivery. We do double order. So we we work a lot of it, not only expanding geographically, but go, not going wider, but going deeper. And I think grocery to me is one of the most exciting ones. And general retail is where, well, there's huge opportunity where there's a lot of work to be done because food delivery market is fantastic. I love it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's my, uh, my alma mater. And, but at the same time, it is, Groceries is something that is new for Germany, right? Especially, 
it is still requires a lot of effort to kind of get there. And that's why it's a, it's maybe a little bit more time consuming, but it's also very, very rewarding to see how this market is moving. So I think that's what where we will continue to expand into, into new verticals. We're now um, do, as I mentioned, grocery, drogery, uh, like all like shampoo and all of those things, then the pet store, pharmacy, bakeries, wines, you know, you name it. And even Everything. DIY, right? Right. So those type of things are uh, uh, pretty exciting. And I think that's, that's we do know that as Vault overall, there's a big future in that. If you now order something in Azerbaijan, for example, if you sign up with some bank and you get, you need to get your credit card delivered, it actually is brought to you by Vault. Wow. In 30 minutes. In Croatia, it's... Um, if you sign up for your internet contract, the modem is brought to you by Volt. So, wow. and it's it, these are kind of things that applications of our business are are limitless, and that's where we can have. Uh, that's the most exciting part to kind of play with all of those things and see what's going to work in this particular country, right? Super cool. So it's going in the direction of delivery of everything. Is it? Do I hear it right? Is it like super logistics oriented business rather than food and grocery delivery? Like those are just big, very important pillars, right? And that's where everything started. But if I hear you correct, the strategy is basically going everywhere. I don't know. You need a contract. Here you go. You need an iPhone. It gets delivered. I don't know. Heavy, bulky stuff. Do you guys do anything around that? <laughs> I think... Food delivery remains our core, right? It's important to ah. understand that that is, that is our core and we build around it. We build around it. We look at what consumer wants at this point, mm -hmm. what consumer wants within the 30 to 40 minutes delivery. I doubt that you would want to have a wardrobe, like you might want it, but do you really need it in 30 to 40 minutes? Um, that's kind of when you say, when you talk about bulky, uh, bulky things, thinking about pet food, thinking about some sort of medications, thinking uh, about your shampoo that you ran out of, those type of things. Yes, definitely. We're, we're, we're moving in that direction while staying very dedicated to our core, to our food delivery business, to our to groceries and to things that we're building ar around that, I would say. So that's yes to, to where it's all going, but at the same time, of that is again like 30 to 40 minutes delivery we focus and vault is very like at least within our universe is well known for focusing on things and just trying to to make them work rather than spreading like everywhere and a little bit here a little bit there so that's kind of the the um, the dna here very interesting at the same time, even though I agree that you guys are kind of mastering one thing and then once you get it going, you jump on other things. But this year, particularly, you guys have been surprising us a lot. You <laughs> have Walt Drive, you have Walt Capital, uh, you have many things. Yes. Uh, can you share about that? How did Was it like years of preparation and now you're just ready to put it on the market? Where is it going? What are those services? Uh, maybe we can start one by one. Well, wow, that is it. It will it, it will be a long conversation if we name them all. But um, you're right. So I think it might seem to you that's all that's all together at the same time. But we've been testing all of those things that you've mentioned and more um, in different markets for for some time, right? If you talk about drive, drive is not um, drive has been active in a lot of countries already for several years. So it's not kind of it's not something that uh, it's something that we bring to Germany um, um, newly or like quite mm -hmm. newly, but uh, or other markets have been working with that product for a long time. I think um, what what else is there? Our ads business, for example, is something that has been tested. This one is pretty new. But it's again, it's something that we believe is is quite quite critical. But I think even just kind of rolling back a little bit. Um, the reality is that you cannot just come to the market and do the same thing that everyone else is doing, mm -hmm. right? You need to innovate. And I think Vault is really great with that, kind of trying to figure out 
testing in one market in a small scale and then figuring out, okay, it works. Then, okay, let's, let's roll it out everywhere. And that comes, uh, this is drive. This is, um, um, double order what we're doing right now, what a consumer after placing their order um, for some time can actually add something from a nearby grocery store or nearby restaurant. So imagine that you ordered a pizza from one place. They don't have a dessert that you like. Mm -hmm. You just kind of add it up from Happens a different restaurant. Time. Exactly. Or you have you, you want your beers from elsewhere. So that's also something that comes from two places, from our own kind of observations, but also for what the consumer wants. I think that's kind of the ultimately we do not teach consumer to kind of to 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 to, to do what we want them to do. You take wow. what people want, you take what they ask, you take you test it, you you pr present something and you see if it really works. And that's how it goes. And I think um also when you're talking about loans and all of the similar things, it's also the side of the merchant, we all, we we obsess about that. We ensure that every merchant has got access to tools that to compete in this market. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to compete in this market now because there's big big names and like you might not have money to put your store on a high street, but you can actually compete on a, within our platform. And we give you tools which are like ads, which are. Um, drive, which is um, like loan if you actually need to do um, uh, something with your store open and you want or whatnot. So that that's how, how we build that, trying to ensure that we meet the demand of uh, either side of the marketplace. Very interesting. No? In, the, in the pandemic time, food delivery business was growing, obviously, but there was also like a narrative uh, among the restaurant community or some startups who wanted to take a uh, piece of the uh, food delivery business that uh, marketplaces like Ubers, like Vault, whatever, uh, they're taking all of our clients, they are uh, taking all the profits, margins are a thing, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, even though many things of those are true, uh, they're based on those issues that restaurants had uh, new startups evolved, right? Like online menus, QR menus, and orders, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's visible how the food delivery market adopted to that as well. Because, hey, guys, you don't want to use our software. You don't want us to be taking the percentage uh, from the orders. Okay, but you can use the drive service flat fee. And many food delivery players are doing that. And I also see that you guys are helping the restaurant business with the capital, as you mentioned, with the tool and with the tools and whatnot. Do you see this relationship between the restaurants and the marketplaces kind of getting into the better place? And if if you understand what I mean, like it has become a more like a win-win situation that the restaurants learned how to work with the platform. You really learned how to help the restaurants and how to grow together so that it's a win-win situation for everyone. And uh, what are maybe other steps that you guys are taking in this direction? Because again, Drive and uh, Vault Capital are very much the steps in that direction. And you are walking big uh, this year on those. So... I would say that it's a fundamental of a business of a partnership when it has to be win-win. There's no other way. If one of the parties is not winning from this partnership, they should not work together. Mm -hmm. Right? That's kind of the reality. And that, that's what we truly at the DoorDash or Vault, that's the, the main logic within the company that we need to give our, our partners uh, tools to be able to, to get the results that they want at the same time when i when i hear things like that i think that our vision of becoming a shopping mall is very good analogy right mm. because you are a shopping mall you provide infrastructure and whether being a part of that or not being a part of this again your decision it's again the consumer that comes in comes in only because there are certain brands and certain offering within that mall. Mm. So we cannot survive or leave or strive without those. It's not, it cannot be one-sided. There's no option for that. And that's also why we continue developing those services, as you said, 
But at the same time, the baseline for us is this mutual mutual benefit out of the partnership. There's no way that either part survives without having that. It's not it's not business then. And I think that that's kind of where where we provide the tools for any small and mom and pop shop to actually compete against against anyone who is in this market, against the big names and being able to be listed in that maybe in they wouldn't even have a in the real shopping mall, they wouldn't have the money to go in and get into that food court. But in our food court, everyone has a place. Everyone has a chance to actually go there. Currently, we also provide like high, what we call hybrid delivery. Some merchants, for example, they deliver themselves usually, right? Mm -hmm. And in Germany, that's quite widespread. And it's very tough to manage your own logistics if you're a smaller store. Mm-hmm. Like you have three, maybe riders, one of them called in sick. What happens? You cannot deliver on your orders. You press the button, you get the vault courier coming for you. And these are the things that we try to give to restaurants or retailers that they can use to grow. Because scaling this type of things, like scaling logistics is a tough, it's a tough job. Yeah. And, um, and generally also scaling customer acquisition is a tough job. So Again, like we we think of ourselves as a as a tool, as an infrastructure that will help. And if it's not helping, then we have to question that absolutely. Very cool. Thank you very much for the answer. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question, and it's kind of my thought process and my perception of DoorDash and Vault, but super interesting if. Again, you know the situation from the inside uh, and uh, how did that work in reality? But in my perception, Vault is and has been positioning themselves as something more premium. I don't know, it's a different touch and feel of the app. It's a different touch and feel of the product. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure, I don't want to to uh, to mislead anyone, but it felt like it was a bit more expensive. Like you guys, in, in the beginning at least, it was a bit more expensive while everybody else was burning cash on you know free deliveries. I don't remember that was like a very much of the case with the Vault. Uh, while DoorDash feels like the app for everyone, like in Vault, you get exclusive restaurants, some exclusive exclusivity stuff, exclusivity service, touch and feel. With DoorDash, it feels like it's different. It's like a service for everyone. DoorDash was going into suburbs, a huge market share, uh, different strategy. How do these, first of all, please tell me if I'm correct and if my perception is right and it makes sense. And how do these things settle together with the time? Yeah, it's it's funny that you're saying that. Um, first and foremost, Vault is the app for everyone. That's for sure. Where it might be coming from is this, the design and the service that we provide is truly premium, right? You can, you get your food. Um, uh, Vault entered like at least German market with the notion of delivering food, not just asking a restaurant to deliver. And a lot of those great restaurants that you couldn't actually order because they wouldn't deliver. They mm -hmm. would be just out there um, serving their table business. They came on Vault. And that kind of created that perception that, hey, you not only have that usual selection that everyone else has, but also that the selection that was not was not possible to get. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it could be like, it can be a just um, maybe a new salad place that was just for for you to walk in, and they wouldn't they wouldn't want to deal with the with the logistics, and it could be something uh, that is slightly higher end, right? So that's where it might be that the initial perception might be coming from, but yet it's a speculation on my side. Um, um, I think the reality is that we do have um, brands that are well known for their affordability like penny on our platform and they are in high demand uh we do um we do have vault plus as an affordability deliver where you don't have to actually pay any delivery fees right so i think i am both happy um and um 
somewhat kind of worried that kind of say that hey this is more this is uh, this is premium brand absolutely but premium brand when you think about the quality of service that we provide but at the same time it is the place for everyone where everyone can find what they want to eat today for lunch you can find more affordable options for dinner you can find slightly more 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 expensive stuff that you would want to treat yourself to or also something that is pretty much available for uh, for everyone so i think the the cool thing that we will continue building that premium feeling from platform point of view we don't want to look like a christmas tree um, providing kind of discounts on everything all the time that's not our strategy either we do know that people want people people are happy to pay play uh, pay premium for um for getting their their the things that they want the specific selection that they want but at the same time we also do know that people like affordable options so that's where we also kind of target that in a targeted way we place those uh, those in the app at the same time so i would say that we are very much aligned with doordash in that in that vision and i hope that we will continue being able to provide the premium experience for actually quite an affordable uh, price tag Amazing. Very exciting. Very exciting conversation and uh, a lot of insight. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your views and the strategies and how Vault is developing and uh, a bit of history today. Um, maybe there is something else you want to share uh, with the audience, uh, your next plan, next steps, uh, ideas, anything uh, that Vault is planning to surprise us with? The only thing that I, I would love to share is that if uh, your your listeners and viewers haven't tried Vault yet, they should. I think that's one of the most important things that I would recommend is because their lives will change and uh, we will work on that uh, uh, to make sure that it happens. So that's the only thing. But Super then exciting. stay tuned for, for lots of new developments, new merchants, new fantastic stuff. Very exciting. I'm pretty sure that at least most of the viewers uh, already tried Vault because it is a very uh, niche podcast with everyone who is deep in food delivery uh, watching and hopefully that it is helpful to you guys. And uh, I would like to thank you very much, Oksana, again for joining this conversation today. Super interesting, super insightful. Was very excited to talk to you. And hope we have more occasions like that and uh, hope uh, Vault continues to set up the bar further and further up and uh, grow uh, and make us happy with the premium service. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stefan. And uh, I appreciate you uh, taking time to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.